AlphaTauri launched their car with a bunch of renders that have a whole number of parts that are basically identical to an FIA show car. However, there are a few little bits, particularly the bodywork, that are different. And so we're just going to very quickly cover that in this comparatively short analysis video. For those of you that are new to my channel, I was an Aero Nemesis for Mercedes for the 2018, 19, and 20 Formula 1 seasons, and I now work as an aerodynamics consultant designing race car aerodynamic packages for all different classes all around the world. Now, I was planning on waiting for some photos from their supposed track test at Imola, however, those didn't seem to eventuate, so I figured we'd be better off talking about this now uh, before we get into the actual testing phase where we'll have kind of a different mini series of videos for that. Now just before we start, so that no one thinks I'm too crazy, what I've done is I've put some side-by-side -side images of the FIA show car here uh, with the AlphaTauri launch render. You'll see that the front wing is almost identical in terms of curvature distribution. Obviously we've got two different photo angles, so the perspective and the angle is a little bit different, but it looks pretty much identical through the main profiles to me. Obviously AlphaTauri has put on the little flat pivots, but apart from that, uh, it looks pretty similar through there to me. And I think things like the front cake tin scoop may be identical as well. And of course, if we look at the render of a top-down view of the FIA show car, uh, which has a different wing to the, the real life model, it's worth noting. Uh, but if you have a look at this render, you'll see that things like the cake tin scoops look pretty identical from top down. The barge board layout and mid portion is pretty much identical. You'll note that the floor edge uh, on the AlphaTauri is massively defeatured. There's nothing going on there at all. So overall, you can see they're really not giving much away on this. And I would expect quite a lot of details to change before launch. So what's different and interesting to talk about? Well, just as a minor detail at the front, we have this uh, outwashing front wing end plate. You'll notice that it, it has a minor outwash at the top. Now, this is generally speaking in this context going to depower the top edge vortex uh, because the, the airflow is naturally moving spanwise this direction from the high pressure of the, the wing over here. This is going to depower the top edge vortex and will cast it a bit further outboards, which it seems so far that outboard positioning of this vortex seems to be the way that most of the grid is going. So whether or not this geometry is real, uh, perhaps this is a the direction they're taking. There's also a narrower nose section in the center, and I don't know that that's really of too much interest, particularly as with four elements going all the way into the nose, I wouldn't be surprised if this is subject to quite a lot of change. What I really want to spend this video talking about though is the bodywork because I think this is probably the thing that is most indicative of what we're actually going to see on track. Now the forward portion of the bodywork seems to be very much following the Aston approach. What we have here is we have a very square inlet that's likely on legality here and then the first bit of this face seems to be uh, roughly squared off to legality although unlike the Aston instead of having a sharp corner at the back here it seems we have more of a smooth blend out there. But underneath, the bodywork is down washing onto the top surface, which as discussed with the Aston is likely to control a bit of losses on the top here and should also pressurize this area a little bit. You can see from this top down view how we have that squared off inlet at the front of legality and then we have the, the outwashing portion here, but then that smooth taper along there. However, once we get rearwards of about here, this is where the strategy really starts to diverge from the Aston approach. Instead of the Aston, which keeps its side pod high the whole way along, has the cooling vent out the top here, and then keeps a big undercut the whole way through, the AlphaTauri uses a very different strategy. The side pod down washes down, meeting onto the top of the diffuser here. We then have, instead of cooling louvers over the top, we have a rearwards flow exit there that stays high and above the surface of the diffuser. So whereas the Aston Martin is pulling clean air from the, the sides in at the rear and also keeping a lot of this clean air at the front to go around into the top of the diffuser and beam wing, what the AlphaTauri does is it actually seems to go and draw a lot of clean air from the top down here along the top of the side pod and then feed that to the top of the beam wing and the side of the diffuser. It's a very different strategy even though the forward portion of the side pod looks quite similar. And this strategy wouldn't work particularly well with louvers because if they are relying on taking a clean air feed from here and dragging it down the top of the side pod, if you added louvers here, you would dirty that air up and that wouldn't be a good idea. You can then see at the rear how we have this wider letterbox inlet here, which is probably going to vent a little bit above the beam wing, so it should come somewhere in the middle of the wing box is where I'd expect that loss to come through. And the bottom of the, the beam wing and the beam wing inlet and the edges of the diffuser 
would be receiving a comparatively clean flow that was drawn down from the top of the side pod. Like I say, very similar intent in terms of getting clean air to the beam wing and the diffuser top surface, but an incredibly different strategy here. And it'll be very interesting to see how this plays out. Another detail that I think is worth just mentioning, although with the disclaimer that this could very easily change, as this, this model is clearly not the real thing, is this little foot plate on the edge of the diffuser. You can see that the, the side wall of the diffuser comes down and then it actually kicks out along the bottom here. I'll zoom in for a little bit more detail. To achieve this, basically what there is, is there's a diffuser legality box that you can only put your side wall in a certain position in terms of width. So if you want to go and make it so that your diffuser comes down on the very outer edge, it has to go all the way to the bottom flat. However, if you go and make your diffuser come down the inside edge of the box, and then you can flick it out at the bottom like that. Now, of course, this is a bit of a compromise because with a diffuser, volume is typically king. So we don't want to give away any diffuser volume by pulling the sidewall in. However, having a flat portion through here could shed any vorticity shed off the bottom of the diffuser a little bit further outboard and closer towards the tire. And it could also kick some mass flow that's running down the side of the diffuser out that way as well. And these can be beneficial features in terms of managing the lower wheel wake. Like I say, no guarantees that's going to be on the real car, but it's an interesting detail and I would have been surprised if no teams tried it out. And here's just another different angle from the front where you can see that particular foot plate right there. That's all for this short analysis. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Leave a comment below on what video you'd like to see next from me and hopefully I'll see you next time.